Institute of Engineering and Technology. And we are studying the subject organizational behavior of semester 4 for all branches. Now, in our past videos, we had started with chapter number 1, that is focus and purpose of organizational behavior. In that, we have understood why we are studying this subject over here, how it is going to be helpful. And we have also studied the nature and scope of organizational behavior. We also saw that organizational behavior is a subject which includes many different other subjects. That is, it is an interdisciplinary field of study. So now today, in continuation with that chapter, we are going to study two different topics. First is the theoretical framework of OB and second is the OB model. Now, the theoretical framework of OB will make us understand various aspects of organizational behavior which are taken into particular theories or where we will be studying about different theories developed by many great psychologists in the past. Now as organizational behavior or in short we will be calling OB is a subject which deals with human behavior. We cannot quantify certain things but in order to get the desired productivity in the organizations we actually want to learn in the subject what needs to be done so that people in the organization behave in a manner which will take them towards high productivity. And there are many many different factors by which we are going to study in this subject. Now as I said we cannot quantify anything but at the same time there are many different things which we can come up as a conclusion from the study. But these things needs to be developed as a concept or a theory. If a particular name is given to a particular concept or a vocabulary is given to a particular concept, then it makes it easier for us to understand, to predict and to implement so that we get the desired outcome. So that is why many psychologists in the past, they have developed various theoretical frameworks so that we can identify which theory to apply where. That is why we will be able to practically apply this subject in our professional life. So first of all, let us see what are different theoretical frameworks, uh, frameworks of OB. Now there are three main theoretical frameworks of organizational behavior. The first framework is called the cognitive framework. Now what does the cognitive framework talk about? It basically focuses on the expectancy, demand and intention of an individual. But first of all to understand this, what is the meaning of cognitive or cognition? Now the word cognition means to know something. It is an act of knowing an item of information that is called cognition. That means whatever we have learned from our past, whatever experience we have gathered, they all forms our cognition. So knowing something is actually cognition. Now what has cognition to do with organizational behavior? So it is a very very important aspect because Individual usually behave in a manner based on their learning that they have gathered from the past and they will apply that learning in their behavior. So cognitive framework actually focuses on the individual aspect of the behavior. A person has a free will to behave based on the learnings and that is why here we are only looking at the individual and not the other factors of human behavior. Now, cognitive framework mainly focuses on the personality types, attitudes, motivation, uh, job stress or many different things where 
only the individual human mind is concerned. Now the second framework is the behavioristic framework. Now the behavioristic framework includes the stimulus response and the response stimulus theory. Now what is this behavioristic framework? The behavioristic framework says that a human being will behave in a certain manner given a particular cue or a stimulus or given a particular situation a person will behave in a certain manner to get a certain desired result. But at the same time modern behaviorists think that a human behavior depends not only on the stimulus but it also depends on the desired consequence that the person is going to get. So a person will think that if I do a particular action, I am going to get this desired result. So then that person will behave in that manner. So whenever the person will come across that stimulus, the person will behave in that manner. So then the response actually becomes the cause or we can say the consequence of an action or a behavior becomes the cause of the behavior and the stimulus becomes the cue for the behavior or the action. The behavioristic framework actually takes into consideration two things. Number one is the, the stimulus or the cue in the environment and number two the consequence or the expected consequence and based on that the individual will behave. But the human behavior can best be explained in terms of continuous interaction between the cognitive, behavioristic and environmental determinants. So the third theory that is the social cognitive framework talks about the interaction between all the different aspects or determinants of human behavior. The social cognitive theory or the SCT says that a human being behaves based on his or her past learning given a particular environment and given a particular situation and to get a particular consequence. But at the same time the human being's cognition includes the past consequences based on similar behaviors. So sometimes the consequences also keep on adding to the cognition. So the social cognitive theory actually believes that the cognition keeps on changing and this change in cognition also happens because of change in the experiences or different consequences that a person gets out of different behavior. So the social cognitive theory actually explains the human behavior in totality. It considers the past learning, the stimulus, the environment and the desired result. Also, it takes into consideration five capabilities of an individual to act or behave. Now let us see what are these five capabilities. Number one is symbolizing. The meaning of symbolizing is that a human being will identify with a particular visual and based on that visual, based on the consequence or based on the emotion or the feeling that the person gets out of it is related to the kind of consequence a person would like to get and in turn it affects the behavior of that person. For example, if an employee has completed a task and after the completion of the task or after the presentation or something that that person has done, if there is a smile on the face of the boss or everyone, that visual is symbolized in terms of appreciation and it is symbolized in, the, in terms of a cognition which says that similar kind of behavior needs to be repeated to get more success, more achievement and more appreciation. So first capability of a human being is symbolizing and this symbolizing actually helps a human being to behave or act in a certain manner. The second capability of a human being is forethought. Forethought means thinking before something. So a human being actually plans before any action. 
So every human being before taking any action or behave, before behaving in a certain manner in an organization will first think or analyze about that particular situation. The employee will analyze that if he or she behaves in a certain manner then a certain outcome is obtained. So based on this forethought also a human being will behave. The third aspect of human capability is observation. Now every employee actually observes from the surrounding. People observe from their families, relatives, their peer group, their superiors, their subordinates. And from that they learn what kinds of actions or behaviors will make them successful. And this is why observational capability also influences the behavior or the action of a human being. The fourth aspect of human capability is self-regulatory. Now every human being has one's own morals and values or principles. Now based on these values or principles, the person behaves in a certain manner. So given a particular past experience or a stimulus or a desired consequence, if the action doesn't fit into the self principle or self moral, then the person will still not behave to get that desired result. So self regulatory is also important because a person independently regulates one's behavior despite of the fact that the person will get a desired outcome. And the last capability of a human being is self reflective. Every employee always reflects upon one's own actions, whether I have done good or not, how much I have performed, whether I have performed well or not, do I need to improve, do I need to repeat this task, do I need to repeat this behavior or do I need to stop this behavior. So self-reflective nature also helps a human being in one's behavior or actions. So these are the three theoretical frameworks of organizational behavior. Now, we will be studying organizational behavior on three levels and that will define our OB model, that is the organizational model. So, organizational model can actually be divided into three different levels. The first level is the individual level. In this first level of OB model, we are going to talk about only individuals. Every individual has a unique personality, values, attitudes, etc. And because of that, every individual behaves in a certain manner in a given situation. So here, the individual is taken as a separate independent unit. Now, here we will be taking many concepts from psychology because it talks about the human mind itself. Now, the second OB model is the group level. Now group level talks about the group dynamics like the structure, the communication within the group, the collective decisions that people take, the politics within the group, the power within the group, who will lead the group, who will become dominant in the group. Even all these factors actually influences the human behavior. Now when we talked about the first level of OB model, it only talked about the personality aspects of an individual. But the same person when goes into a group, then the person is influenced by the group presence. And because of that, the behavior may change. So a person may behave in a certain manner alone, but when the person is in the group, the behavior may change. So the second level of our study will be the group level. And the third level of our study will be the organization systems level. Now, why organization systems level? Now, organization systems level definitely takes into consideration the first and the second models, that is the individual and the group level. Because after all, organization itself is a group and a group consists of individuals. But the structure of an organization, the policies, the rules, regulations, etc. also contributes to the behavior of a human being. And that is why a human being's behavior will change given the organizational systems. 
So in particular organizational system, how a human being tends to behave, that we will be studying in the third organizational systems, the third model that is the organization systems model. So in the coming chapters in the entire subject organizational behavior, we will be studying the different theories related to these three models that is the individual level, the group level and the organization systems level. So here we end our first chapter where we have actually taken an overall idea about organizational behavior. So by now our minds are ready about what we are going to study in our chapters of organizational behavior. So I hope you have understood all the theories well.